edition of the 10K on the Bay podcast, my journey to 10,000 active items on eBay. My name is Chris Lynn, and it's my privilege to offer five actionable ideas to be a better eBay seller in every episode. I'm at 3,000 listings right now, 7,000 to go. Thank you for tuning into my journey. This episode is made possible by my awesome Patreon members. We're up to 40 people already who are making this possible. It's awesome being able to create content specifically for my Patreon members. Thank you so much. For more information, please check out 10K on the Bay or join my free eBay group. It's called eBay MBA on Facebook.com. Um, all the links are below. Please check it out. Let's get into it. So the very first idea that I have this week is to clarify why you're doing this. For me, whenever I lose focus, it's like when I take my eyes off the goal. Um, and, and, and obstacle is what you see when you take your eyes off the goal. I firmly believe in this saying. Um, so for me, I want to provide a life for myself um, and my girlfriend. So I am saving $200,000 for a down payment and a little bit extra to buy a nice rock for her. Uh, to increase the urgency, she has placed a half, or I'm sorry, a quarter carat annual penalty. So it's like a progressive penalty. Every year that I don't propose, I got to tack on another quarter carat. And that's a great incentive. She's really in no hurry with this, um, with this new added um, incentive program. So I'm definitely going to be working hard to avoid that progressive penalty. And of course, it's all fun and games, but I really just want to provide a nice foundation for us to grow our lives together. That's my why. That being clear makes it easier for me to get the rest of my stuff done each week. So hopefully you guys can have a really strong why for why you're doing this because um, we shouldn't take life too seriously. None of us are going to get out alive. So number two, figure out the price you need to pay to get what you want and then pay the price. So for me, my goal is $400,000 a year pre-tax in 2018. So I need to prepare myself in order to be ready for that objective next year. So how I'm going to do that is, I basically have broken it down into four things I need to do to make that possible. The first thing is that I need $100,000 to buy 10,000 items at $7.50. Now the reason why I say this is because I think it's going to cost me $10 to get the item on the eBay and fulfill it to my customer. I'd like to sell the item for $30 at an average sale price and net $10. So to simplify that, buy at 10, sell for 30, net 20. So a $10 profit on each item. Repeat that 10,000 times. So the first thing I need to make that possible is I need $100,000 in order to pay for that first part of the item for $7.50 and also $2.50 per item to list it and to also ship it and handle customer service on the product. So through my testing earlier this year, I have figured out it's relatively easy for me to set up a system for a lister to list 200 items in a week. In fact, um, the instructions are relatively clear a lister with a little bit of training could easily do 100 items per day. Now that's a pretty grueling work day, but the reason why I say that is because it's been much easier for me to find a part-time lister, you know, once or twice per week, versus a part-time lister that's doing, you know, 30 to 40 per day. It just seems like when you get into a groove, uh, you can take 25 photos all in a row of 25 items you can you know do a bunch of drafts all at once and I think that it would be better financially to have my listers work one or two full-time days versus the part-time whenever they have extra time Does, that just works for me um, other people have different models but for me my plan is to have five listers listing ideally two times a week to get that 200 item amount and I'd like that job, <coughs> excuse me, to be um, $20 per hour. That's my objective to create a job. I live in the Bay Area, California. $20 an hour is not exceptional. I mean, even a fry chef at In-N-Out Burger makes $15 an hour. Um, and, you know, they obviously have more stability than just me selling stuff on eBay. 
But, you know, of course, I'm aiming towards creating a 1099 contractor position. So I want to make sure my instructions and my um, policies are directed towards creating an awesome 1099 position for a lister. Now that brings me to my next point. So after I have five listers doing 200 items a week, that's the 1,000 um, items that I need to basically list in order to maintain this, you know, essentially 100K a month operation. Now I need to hire a shipper slash customer service manager. Now I know from experience when everything is organized well, you can sh easily ship 25 to 50 packages per hour. A somebody dedicated to shipping could probably knock out the 200 packages necessary in half a day, which leaves, or worst case scenario, six hours, which leaves two hours a day to do customer service questions, whether a customer is doing a combined order or a return or a refund. For me, most of the time, I just provide a refund um, to the customer, um, unless there's something wrong that I'll ask for a return, but I'm trying to limit my defects on the front end with improving my processes with the lister, but I'll get into that a little bit further into this uh, episode. So the first three are have $100,000 ready, have five listers list 1,000 items, have one shipping manager ship and process 1,000 items uh, per week, and then finally the fourth thing which I'm finding a bit challenging as I grow is to have a proper accounting and bookkeeping system I'd like it to be on Google Docs and to share that document with a VA who's inputting information um, and then also my actual CPA. So I'd like to have um, a VA helping with the basic work um, or an automated system like GoDaddy Bookkeeping. Um, but of course, there's a little bit of tweaking because you know a little bit of human touch doesn't hurt. So I may have a VA do that um, a few hours to get ready for my accountant. So that's what I think it takes to run basically a $1.2 million eBay enterprise per year. Now, I could be wrong, and I probably am wrong. It's not going to be a straight line on my way to this goal. Um, the reason I did it is because I like setting large goals because they're inspiring and they're motivating. Like, I'm not going to set my goal of just barely paying my bills. That's not exciting, and I'm not going to get out of bed in the morning with the pep. And um, real quick, before I get into the other points, I just want to mention how blessed I am to have a very high energy level. I'm talking to a lot of people who are doing eBay and in, you know, for, for various reasons, either they are, you know, maybe they have a physical handicap, they may, be, um, they may have gone through um, some kind of health issues, they may, may be eating a poor diet, they may not be sleeping well. There's so many circumstances that can actually reduce your energy level and the energy level staying at a high level is like a super hack. It allows me to work longer, allows me to work out, allows me to be essentially operating um, with a clear mind all day. And I realize most people don't have that. I also don't have any kids. So I can set my, my goals a little bit higher just because I have a little bit of extra time. So that being said, I just want to uh, emphasize how awesome and how great having a high amount of energy is, I, I do think it's very important to try to do the best you can to rest well, eat well, um, and do well so that you can you know, maintain your health. Okay, back to the point. Um, I want to specify here, um, based on the model that I have, which is basically doubling your money every 90 days. So you, you buy an item for $10, you throw it on the eBay for 30, you wait 90 days or less, it sells for 30 after all your fees you're left with 10. Now that works as a 90 day model which I think is sort of a moderate sell through rate. That's you selling one third of your items every single month. Now that being said, as I'm you know learning thrifting and bulk buying, estate sales, garage sales, um, or you know online or retail arbitrage where I'm purchasing items from a retailer in order to resell for a profit, um, I think it's very important to think about how long you want to actually wait. So just as a basic idea, if I'm going to double my money every 90 days, that means I could actually do four times my money in 180 days. So rather than sell items and turn it over two cycles, 
if I'm going to make four times my money, I am now willing to wait six months for that to happen. Now, here's something very cool, which is that if I were to make eight times my money, I am now willing to wait an entire year to sell that item. The profit margin is so high that I'm willing to wait literally an entire year for it to sell. Now, I'll give you an example of this. Halloween costumes or Christmas stuff is essentially 90 to 95 percent off as soon as the holiday is over. If I were to buy the item for a dollar and it were selling for, let's say, twenty dollars or twenty five dollars plus shipping next Christmas, it might be worth it for me to buy the item and just sit on it, um, list it and maybe somebody will buy it before then. But it's OK if I literally have to wait 50 weeks for it to become Christmas season again, if I'm going to make eight times my money. That's very interesting to me. I did not think about this until I went to Amazon ASD and I was looking at some sellers who have the opposite spectrum, which is what I'm going to bring up right now, which is having a 30 day turn and being OK with as low as the eight to 10 percent margin. OK, now that's a little scary for me. It definitely is more risky because you're buying items that um, probably very seasonal because they're selling in a very tight window. I like, you know, for example, in the summertime, if you bought a high amount of swimsuits during the peak of the heat in, in the United States, you probably have a better chance of selling them than in the winter. So expecting to get, let's say, $3 on a $10 investment is actually very similar to doubling your money over the course of 90 days. It's a little bit more work. Uh, I'm sorry, by a little bit more work, I mean triple the amount of work as doing a double your money in 90 days. But you're getting all of your money back um, within 30 days. And it's very interesting because you could actually learn faster with the quick flip model. If you're flipping items within uh, the 30 days, you're really learning the market changes. You're uh, becoming an expert in that field versus if you're selling stuff that takes an entire year, you're not doing enough transactions really to learn the market that specifically. And you know, we're talking about um, flipping, quick flipping 12 times in a, in a calendar year or just one time with, you know, massive, massive margins. Now, for me, what I've seen is that even though the selling the one item per year has a, is the least amount of work, it is, in my opinion, the highest barrier to entry because you need to have exceptional knowledge or be in the right time in the right place to get an item that you're basically buying for 10 and selling for 100, right? You have to know something kind of that other people don't. And that may mean going to the thrift store and recognizing a very rare Tommy Hilfiger 80s retro vintage starter jacket or something. Not starter jacket, but, a, you know, like an old big logo vintage Tommy item that collectors will pay $250, $300 for, and you're buying it for 20 bucks at, let's say, Salvation Army. That's a very high barrier to entry. You have to know what platform to sell it on, how to list it, how to photograph it. You have to know how to watch out for fakes. Um, you also need to have the money to shell out a little bit more typically for a rarer item. And so having, let's say, 1,000 items that cost $100 to flip for 300 is essentially the same amount of work that I am doing. So 1,000, but with 1,000 items instead of 10,000. So we're talking about 10 times less work, right? That's a little mind-blowing. I actually think you could do that on your own. You could run a seven-figure eBay business on your own if you have the capital to buy $1,100 items that are worth $300. So that's just the thought. Um, I think it's interesting to look at exactly what it takes to reach your goals. And again, I think exciting goals are very important. So figure out the price you want to pay then pay the price. That's step number, or that's idea number two. Now, idea number three is the relentless focus on improving your customer experience daily. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, eBay customers are regular people and you want to source things that they want to buy. So you want to source better items. And what does that mean? That means 
better seasonality. Maybe they're more rare and more desirable. Maybe their condition is excellent. Maybe the items are more useful. Maybe they're more convenient. This is what I'm talking about when focusing on your customer. You have somebody somewhere looking for something and you're providing a superior product, you're going to win. Um, also, none of this stuff is ever, is it's all never ending, meaning you can always find better items. You can always offer more competitive pricing, which would require you to basically get the item for less money generally if you want to keep the same profit margin. You need to consistently take better pictures with better lighting, better angles. You need more accurate descriptions. You need to be clear, concise, and accurate for many reasons, including the fact that Google crawls your description. So if you have clear tags, it's going to show up on search much better than having random information that's not related to your item in your description. You could also focus on creating sh cheaper shipping options for your customers. And to the point where you're actually offering free shipping to your customers, that's obviously the highest customer experience. It's not necessarily um, a, um, sorry, I just got a text message. It's, it's not necessarily um, a more profitable thing to, to focus on your customer experience. But in the end, I do think that the people who get customer service right uh, are the ones that are doing the best. Um, sorry, let me turn this off. Okay, so the next thing is to focus on faster shipping and faster handling time. So for me, I think the best situation is to be like Amazon and basically um, ship the same day that it's ordered. I think Amazon actually ships within the same hour. So, I mean, that's an exceptional customer experience, and typically their packages arrive earlier than you expect or exactly on time. I feel like that's an excellent, excellent way to run your business. And then finally, hassle-free returns for up to 60 days is offered. If you look at, you know, on the very, very extreme end, you have Zappos who offers 365-day returns. That is an amazing, rare customer service experience. Um, so I think if you are constantly thinking about how to make your customers happy, then you will be successful on eBay. And that's that. Okay, number four. Live the Kaizen and Lean methodology. And if you, for those of you not familiar with Lean, I would check out the book Two Second Lean by Paul Agers. It's free. It's on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description. It's awesome. It, it's like my old company, Lexus. It's the passionate pursuit of perfection. It never ends. Perfection doesn't exist. You're always just chasing it. So in order to do that, I think you need to be a craftsman. You need to improve every single process of your business always. Better sourcing, better listing, better photography, better packing, faster shipping, faster sorting. Everything that you're doing day to day, make it faster by a factor of two. So like if it takes you 10 minutes to take photographs, figure out how to do it in five, then in two and a half, then in one minute. Then you have an amazing robot that does the whole thing for you in one second, right? That's the focus. That's the idea. I think if you focus on that, your costs will get smaller and smaller and smaller and your profit will grow. You'll be able to spend more time producing more output. Um, or you could use this, you could use way less time and produce the same output and use that extra time for leisure or with your family or whatever. But the idea is to condense the work that you need to do in a smaller amount of time with less defects. You know, ultimately a perfectly lean eBay operation would mean listing 4,000 items, selling 4,000 items, and having zero returns. Now that's, that's basically impossible to be able to do 100% accuracy perfectly, perfectly described, and have every single customer happy. Of course, that's going to be very difficult, but that's the point. The point is that it never ends. It's a continuous journey. For me, since I have that mentality of being lean, I hit my goal every single day when I make an improvement. I don't have to wait um, three weeks or a quarter or two months or a whole year or whatever to hit some arbitrary number that I create um, to be happy. I'm just happy every single day because I'm making some kind of mini improvement. So the fifth thing is something I'm really working on, which is consuming a relevant data diet. And I don't even know if this is a term. I'm just sort of making it up. 
which means that you should only read things that relate to the part that you are improving each week. So I have this habit of listening to lots of different business podcasts, and that actually I think is not the proper way to do it. You should be, for example, I want to improve my photos this week. If that's the one area that I want to improve my business, I should be only listening to photography tip podcasts or YouTube videos or whatever. And I think that that low, that, that consu- that relevant uh, data is going to help you reach your goal faster. And you really can't improve more than one or two areas per week. But to be honest, if you can do one or two areas per week, you're looking at a 50 to 100 major improvements in your business over the course of a year. Now that's outstanding. Being able to improve your business 50 times by a factor of two, meaning like, as we said before, taking a 10 minute process and making it five minutes, standardizing it so somebody else can do it. Doing that 50 to 100 times per year, there's no way you're not going to be more successful. And the only thing that I can think of that will help help with that is an accountability partner or a mastermind group or a good group of friends. So you guys are welcome to join my Facebook group. It's free. It's called eBay MBA. You can go in there, find an accountability partner or a mastermind group. If you tag me, I will do my best to help you find one. But again, it's it's pretty challenging. There's a lot of people in there. Try to find somebody in the same time zone. Try to find somebody who sells the same type of items as you. Also, remember that no matter what level you're at, you can still only focus on one or two items per week. They are the same as you. They still put one foot, they still put one leg into the pant leg like you in the morning. Everyone is the same. They're all focusing on improving a little bit. If you ask rich people how much money they need, they might answer just a little bit more. And it's the same case with someone who's poor. Everyone could use a little bit more and to get more, you got to focus on one or two improvements each week because you don't have enough time to do more than that. So I hope this has been very useful for you. Um, please like and subscribe. I'm going to shout out my 40 Patreon members now. If you guys um, want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash 10K on the Bay. But thanks so much to Tracy Chapman, Frank Apicella, Kenneth Gatano, Meredith Wilkins, Jeremiah Byron, J. Scott Mays, Clark Sir. Clairvois, uh, I'm sorry, I probably butchered your name, Nicole, Monty, Joseph, Tina, Jeff, Aaron, Ryan, Floyd, Carney, Amanda, Mariella, Mallory, Marcy, Jodine, Reseller Niche Podcast, Diana Shields, Notes, Mitchell Alvarez, and Anne Dole. Wow, that is a lot of people helping me out. Thank you so much for your time, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Please email me at 10konthebay at gmail.com. If you have any questions, I will always answer them personally. Have a great one.